Hello guys, today I show you how to remap the alpaca and I'm explaining some of the settings in the control app and I show you how to set up Flickstick with the alpaca this will work for the old alpaca and for the new one if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and like the video and now let's get into it there are a few built-in profiles that are ready to use so you have a mixed input profile that has the left stick as analog stick and everything else is MK and you have a full MK profile that has the left stick as VASD if the game doesn't support mixed inputs and you have also two console profiles that have a full controller layout and then you have custom profiles I already built some of these Usually they are empty like this and remapping is pretty straightforward and easy. To remap the controller you just click on the button you want to remap, then click add actions. Now this window will pop up where you can select any button you want, whether it's a keyboard button or controller button or even mouse button, doesn't matter. So X is usually reload. Now you can, if you want to do a keyboard layout, you can add R, close, and now this button will output R. You can also label it as reload, so you remember what it does. If you want to add another action, like interact for example, you can have it on long press, and now you can select E. And now on long press it will output E. You can even add a third one with double press. That V, just as an example. Now we have three actions on one button. For the left stick, if it's an empty profile, you noticed you can't click here. So you have to go into the settings and turn it to four directions. Now you can map these to WSD for example. Or if the game supports it, you can obviously map it as left analog stick, like this. To enable gyro, you have to go into the settings and now you can choose what you want. If you want it as always on, as touch off or touch on. This is what I would recommend. If you have it always on, you don't have a button to ratchet. If you want to have it always on, but a button to ratchet, you have to choose touch off and then choose one of these buttons or the hexagon surface. Now I would recommend to have touch on on the hexagon as it's supposed to be. And then you have to assign the mouse axis X negative and then X positive and here the same negative and positive and now gyro will work. I will explain how to adjust the sensitivity later in this video again. I already made one about the sensitivity. I will link it in the description if you want to check it out. This is basically how to remap the alpaca but the good thing is we don't have to do this all the time for every profile we can just copy an already existing profile so if you want to do a mixed input profile you can just go here and then select fps fusion and then it will load the profile and you can just remap the things you need to or you can select load from file and then you can import a profile that you already have saved or you have downloaded from one of the community members or if a friend of you have sent it to you you can just click on it it's my fragpunk profile and then it will load it up and you're ready to go you can find some profiles from the community in the input labs discord under profile sharing now you can search for a game you want maybe someone has already done a profile then you can just click on it and download the control app file and import it. 
A really cool feature they recently added is thumbstick saturation. With this you can adjust the amount you have to move the left stick to produce maximum input. So you can reduce this to let's say 50% and now you have to move the left stick only 50% of its maximum range of motion to produce maximum input. This is really useful for games that don't let you adjust this setting in-game. This will make your movement feel much better and snappier. This will be available and really useful for the right stick because it's much smaller and has less range of motion. Then in the settings tab you can adjust the touch sensitivity of the hexagon if it should be more responsive or less responsive. You can choose one of these presets or adjust it manually. Then mouse sensitivity is kinda like your DPI on the mouse, but on the alpaca it's dots per degree. Here you should choose a sensitivity where you can move the mouse cursor with the controller comfortably and then you adjust the sensitivity just in game like you would on your mouse. Here you can obviously adjust your thumbstick dead zone if you need to. Then in the advanced settings you have some options if you're experiencing more drift than usual. You can enable the longer calibration. This will take 4 times longer and do a better job at averaging the drift. You can always click on this question mark and the window will show up. The guys from Input Labs did a really great job at explaining what each of these settings do. So make sure to read these and enable one of these if you need to. Invert touch polarity is if you have issues with the touch sensitive hex. If it's not detecting your finger really well, you can try to enable or to change the charge and discharge right here. That's it for the control app settings. Now I will show you how to set up your RVS. To do that, I would highly recommend to get raw Oxel because it will make your life much easier. And it's also the fastest and easiest way to change your vertical sense. Once you have raw Axel, you just leave everything at 1 and then load into your game of choice. Once you're in the game, you just line your radical up with something and do a 90 degree turn until you get one full rotation. So now the sense is obviously too high, so I have to reduce it until I get one full rotation. So that looks about right. Now we have RVS4. If you want to play at, let's say, RVS6, you just go to raw oxel here and type in 0.5 and apply. Now you have RVS6. And if you want to reduce your vertical ratio, you click this box and then you can type in whatever percentage you want. So I like to play at point. 5625 because that's the screen ratio. And now you have your vertical sense reduced. And now we can double check that if you want. And now we should do one and a half rotation with a 90 degree turn. And as you can see, that lines up pretty much perfectly. That's how easy it is to change sensitivities and if you want to use acceleration and you want to do a basic linear acceleration, for example 3 to 12, you can just type in 0.75 because 4 times 0 0.75 is 3 and then choose linear, then cap type both. And now cap input is the maximum speed threshold you want to hit for the maximum acceleration. So let's say you want to have that at 30. And then cap output is the acceleration strength. So we want four times acceleration. That means you type in four and zero offset. 
and now you have a linear acceleration and if you move the controller you can see the red dot is moving as I move the controller and with that you can see how fast you have to move until it hits maximum acceleration and you can do an offset which is what I like to do let's say 5 is pretty nice now we have a flat section here that means in this part there is zero acceleration so you can track targets without acceleration and acceleration will only kick in if you flick however if you own an alpaca i would highly recommend to get custom curve pro because here you can save up to 10 profiles and you can play around with different acceleration settings and save them without having to reset everything and also it gives you a lot more control over your settings for example you can do some curves like this like an S curve for example just you have a lot more control over your curve than on Pro Oxel it's in my opinion a lot better and you can also change the vertical sensitivity right here with the vertical sensitivity multiplier and then apply a lot of people have asked how I ratchet so I'm showing you how I modest my alpaca usually the black hexagon is touch sensitive and is used to enable gyro and as you can see on mine it does nothing because I have modded my R1 button to be touch sensitive so if I just touch it I can move enable gyro and then to ratchet I just lift my finger up and make contact again and then I also use R1 to shoot simple as that and I will show you a picture of how I did that that's it for today's video let me know in the comments if you have any questions. See you next time.